We play viewers. Everybody, how's it going? You know, it's funny because my daughter said, have you been live lately? Like, when is the last time you've been live? So, um, <laughs> you know, I told her I think it was Wednesday of last week. I'm not sure, but definitely on my business page, I've been sharing uh, trainings and things of that nature. So I've been around. Hey, guys, how are you? You know, I have been watching... Uh, the climate on social media with everything that's going on in our country and just how sensitive, you know, everything is. If you're like me, you may have had a day or two or a moment or two where you just had to take a break and like get it together um, because there are so many emotions, <clears throat> you know, running rapid <clears throat> in our um, in our world, especially on the space of social media. And I wanted to talk this evening about some of the things that I'm noticing as a brand builder, um, a coach, and a mentor that is transpiring with people and their brands. And they may not, they may not even realize, right? Hey, Valerie. Hey, girl. Hey. They may not even realize that, you know, you know what's transpiring on social media and how they're showing up is very much a part of their brand. So I do teach branding. I help people build their brands, but I do it from a completely different space. So it's not your logos, your websites, and your pretty pictures. So all the money you're spending on the photo shoots and all those things, they have their place, but they definitely don't come before um, getting really, really clear about who you are as a brand. And that's something that I help my clients do. And I just kind of want to talk about what I'm seeing in the social media uh, space online and how it's impacting people. And I also want to give um, sound advice and information, like direction, for those of you who are entrepreneurs and, and you're building your brand in this you know, very sensitive economy that we're in. Now, before I do that, though, we got a few directives for those who join our live broadcast. Number one, if this is your first time, you've never, ever been on a live broadcast with me before. Valerie, I've never seen you before. How are you, girl? Um, if this is your first time, one of the things we do is we put our name in the comments. So put your name in the comments. Let me know what type of business you own, uh, how you rock out in the marketplace, how you serve, what your superpowers are. If you don't know... <laughs> Awesome. If you don't know what your superpowers are, you need to holler at your girl because it is going to be the thing that's going to help you in your brand building process tremendously. Hey, Valerie, <laughs> you said you like the knowledge. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I got quite a bit that I want to talk about and share with you all who are, you know, building businesses and brands and you use social media as a means of marketing, sharing, advertising your business. Oh, you watch me all the time? Oh, this is the first time I've had an opportunity to see your name on a broadcast. So I am happy um, to, to see your name and to know that you, you've been on. So you'll fit in category number two. Number one, if this is your first time, you know, um, let me know what type of business do you run. Valerie, what type of business do you own? Uh, but number two, if this is not your first time, like Valerie, um, put hashtag renew in the comments, the name of my Consulting businesses renew full circle. So we put hashtag renew if it's not our first time. Even if you're coming back on the replay, let me know you were here. Just put hashtag renew in the comments. And the third directive for all of our trainings, there's a little button on the left-hand side. It says share. Do you know something magic happens when you press that button? Yeah, you can press that button and it allows someone else that you know on your timeline um, to you know get the information. Like Valerie said, she enjoys the information. I'm sure it will be valuable for maybe another entrepreneur or maybe you have someone that you know personally who would, you know, gain value from the video. Tag them. Tag them in the comments so that they can be in on the conversation that we're going to have um, on tonight. Um, Beauty Salon on a wholesale hair extension company based in Dallas. Beautiful. Dallas is in the building. Okay. Dallas is in the building. Um, quick introduction, you know, again, maybe someone shared the video out and you're like, who's this lady? What is she talking about? I am Tanya Wilson Cherry, the growth strategist, business coach and mentor to women service-based business owners, 
also women who aspire to be coaches, teachers, or trainers. Um, and uh, I am, I help them build their brands and their business. So maybe they're looking to profit more in their business. Identify who their perfect people are, which is a strategy I take my clients through. And grow businesses that not only fund their lifestyle, um, but they don't run their lifestyle. How many of you feel like or have been at a point in your business building process that you just felt overwhelmed. You just felt like your business was taking control of your life. That was me um, some years ago. I actually opened a brick and mortar service-based business, got married and had a baby in a three-year time frame. On top of that, I was in a dysfunctional marriage and so I was overwhelmed. I felt consumed and I began creating tools and strategies to get unstuck, increase my productivity, um, I started sharing them like randomly, guys, with uh, my then clients, and they worked for them. Um, before I knew, uh, my community was asking me to keynote, host workshops, seminars, things of that nature. And um, I realized that I had been consulting the whole daggone time, <laughs> but I had been doing it without monetizing it. And uh, I went to a conference back in 2011. And I had the biggest aha moment uh, for me. It is the reason that I coach and consult to this particular day. Because I didn't even understand that what I was doing was considered coaching and consulting. There were businesses within my community that were asking me about, you know, business, how to run their business, market it, ideas, um, things of that nature. And I was just, you know, sharing, you know, what I knew. And then I found out that I was actually operating in one of my superpowers, which was um, business building um, strategies. But I also learned, the biggest thing that I learned was that my personal life rolled over into my business. Somebody, please put that in the comments because I need you guys to really, really get that. It's going to align with, you know, really building an authentic brand and what we're seeing today, the big awakening that's happening for many entrepreneurs in this particular space, but I realized that my personal life was rolling over into my business. So systems and strategies, those are some of my superpowers. They come naturally from me. Um, I can kind of see something and immediately kind of um, devise a system for it. But at that time that there was trouble in paradise at home and, you know, my personal life was rolling over into my business. It didn't matter what I knew about systems and strategies. You know, I was struggling just to hold it all together. And there were some specific things that I ended up having to do in order to find harmony and balance in my business building process. And I now teach that to, to other women and my clients. Guys are doing absolutely amazing. I mean, like putting it down, making the coin, even in this, um, from the, the on start of the pandemic and uh, with what's going on in the economy, my clients are doing extremely well in their business. And I'm so grateful for that uh, because one of my top five values is helping women to have healthy economies. But as far as what I've been seeing, hey, Victor, how are you? Um, as far as what I've been seeing in, in the space that, are, that we're in, I personally, so if you've never been on a live with me before, you're like, Who, who's this lady? Um, I'm also a kingdom entrepreneur, so I'm a believer. And um, I personally feel that our country and our world is, what's this here? Going through an awakening. Like many people are waking up and realizing that um, not even in this, in this time of um, social injustice being at the forefront of um, a lot of the conversations, um, even during the pandemic, the stay at home, people are realizing more and more what they do want and what they don't want. But during this particular time where it's been a, a space of African Americans really expressing you know, how they feel, and bringing an awareness to, you know, some of the social injustices they feel they've encountered. Um, I'm also finding that in that space of sharing, many people are feeling traumatized by what's transpiring. I'm watching many influencers 
um, will name influencers. I'm, I, I don't do the name calling thing or whatever, um, but I see many of them sharing their their emotions or their feelings or their thoughts and then later on having to come back or get PR control to come in and help them retract, you know, what they've said. And as a transformational growth strategist, um, I, what I see is a lot of people who are uncertain about who they are as a brand. And when you are unclear about who you are as a brand, it's difficult to build an authentic brand. I mean, it's, you, you can't. When you don't know who you are, building something authentic that is in alignment with who you are, how you feel, and all of that, it's very, very difficult. So um, what I see, this is how, when I see all of what's transpiring, I feel people are almost being asked to have like therapy sessions front and center online on social media. Somebody tap the screen. Let me know if I'm talking to the right audience. If I've attracted people who may feel the same way I feel, I feel people are kind of being asked to have like this therapy session in front of 5 billion, 0.5 billion people on social media. Um, I have had many entrepreneurs connect with me who don't know how to finagle in this environment. They are uncertain. They feel afraid that they won't be included if they don't um, say what everybody is saying if their feelings are slightly different or if they don't know what to say, they feel that they won't be included. One of the things I understand about brand building is it's really important for you to understand who you are. That's what your brand is so much of who you are. I don't care what the company is, even if it's a, um, you know, um, Fortune 500 company or whatever, the brand has been founded on the CEOs, the people who actually built and established the brand. And when we don't know who we are, it is impossible to show up authentically. Hey, um, let me see, let me say this properly. Kerger, Kerger the men? I'm, I'll tear it up, I'm sorry, but welcome to the broadcast uh, this evening. Listen, when we don't know who we are, it's difficult to, to build something authentic. I've also been seeing uh, posts about an influencer, and again, I won't call names. It's just not my thing, right? You know, to each his own. I think awareness is super, super important. Uh, but I've been, anyway, I've been seeing a post about an influencer who had made a million dollars. You know, she was telling her journey about making a million dollars and come to find out she had actually um, done some plagiarism. So she had copied somebody else's work, you know, put it in a book and sold it. Now I, I got real strong feelings. I'm sorry if I tore it up dear. Hey Marlon, how are you? I got real strong feelings about the copying thing, right? Um, one, because I've experienced you know, my intellectual property and things like that being taken, you know, several different times when I didn't know what to have in place, you know, to combat that. But I also feel strongly about it because I know that whenever we're in the space where, you know, we go online and we go to somebody's website and we just copy their website or our conversation becomes exactly what their conversation was or we begin to teach the same concepts that they're teaching, now, I believe that we have teachers and trainers and people who we are inspired by, but when we write out copy, it makes it really difficult for you, one, to find your flow in building your brand. It, it, it's almost impossible because everything that you share when you're operating in that space is really coming from someone else's work. It's really coming from someone else's process, and it's not authentically who you are. So I have my own you know, feelings, you know, about the copycat thing. And if you follow me long enough, you've seen me share. Maybe you didn't know the inside of it. But because I help women build their brand, I help them build authentic brands. Somebody put that in the comments. I help them build authentic brands, brands that are in alignment with who they are. And when women get into that space where they know who they are, um, they're, they're really aligned with what it is that they want to build, 
they build completely different. There's a flow, there's a, a, an energy that comes with building something that's coming from your own level of expertise, your space that you rock out in. It's, it's just a different flow. So that's another reason why um, I have strong feelings about, you know, you know, just copying someone's intellectual property or um, I just do. So anyway, this particular influencer is being talked about because, you know, it's being said that she was doing plagiarism. So when I see things like that transpiring, <clears throat> I understand fully that people have not gotten clear on who they are as a brand. So uh, my programs and, and coaching opportunities most often are year-long programs because I believe building a brand is a lot of work. I believe it's a lot of personal work. And when people have a safe space to be able to get clear and define who they are, you know, by the time it comes out into the public, they define their unique lane and their space. And in times like this, they aren't as uncertain about how they need to flow or how they need to finagle. We're actually in, uh, I have an academy. I'm also the founder of 3B Success Academy for women in business. And this particular month, we are working on branding. So this is so in alignment with, you know, just the season that I'm in, the coaching that I'm doing behind the scenes this particular month and what's going on with the climate. And one of the sessions that we just recently did was about core values. It was about core values. Now, this is so important because your core values are really your beliefs. What is it that you believe in as a person and as a brand? I'm going to give you guys an example. I'm going to go over some of my personal core values and then some of my business or brand's core values. And we're going to talk about the importance of it. Um, I always share, I think I've done maybe three or four broadcasts, you know, giving you an assignment to figure out what your top five values are. Well, you as a person have core values and then your business has core values as well. So one of the reasons I know that people haven't stepped into this space of brand building is because if we really look at what we value, so if it's, let's just say integrity is something that we value. If integrity is one of our core values, we're not doing the plagiarism thing. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So when I look at, you know, what's transpiring in the space overall in the brand building process and I see incidents like that, I know or I'm wondering, has this person even sat down and define what their core values are? This is brand building, guys, on another level. Remember, it's not your website. It's not your pretty pics or your logos. Those are extensions that come after you dis decide who you are um, as a brand. So every business or company should have defined core values. It begins to dictate um, what your brand's culture is going to be. If you're going to hire people, um, if you're going to bring people on your team, if you're going to collaborate, if you're going to do a partnership, if you're going to network, all of those things will be decided more clearly and more defined and be in alignment when you know what your core values are within your brand or your business. And see, you know, so many people so ready to go get a photo shoot. Listen, I think, I think they have their place. But I know so many people who have paid for expensive photo shoots. They've gotten someone to design their website. They have all the things, all the sexy stuff. And they still ain't making no coin. I'm going to say that one more time. I know so many brands who have gotten photo shoots and done all the sexy stuff and still not making any coin. And that's because earning the revenue does not come from your websites, your logos, and your pretty pics. It comes from understanding who you are as a brand. And then those things are added processes. Because what happens, you can attract some people because of the pretty pics, the logos, and things of that nature. But to be able to sustain and really give them the value that they now expect because you have this, you know, fly photo shoot or whatever, it, it often goes by the wayside. So your core values are super important when you're building an authentic brand. Here's a reason why it's so important that, you know, you're building an authentic brand. Number one... 
If you're building a business, it becomes a part of your lifestyle. It's so much a part of your everyday life. It's You, you put a lot of hours and a lot of work into it. Um, I help women grow businesses that fund their lifestyle and not run their lifestyle. And one of the ways I do that is helping them get clear about who they are. So when we have times like this, um, they don't feel pressured. And when I say pressured, I think it's important that um, for everything that we're facing in our world today, I think it's important that we have an idea of where people stand. I think it's even more important that people do their work. If, you know, like Valerie says, she's been following me um, for quite some time. You'll see me talking about doing your work. Your work is figuring out who you are. So let me give you guys um, an example. I'm going to start with, um, let me see, some of my core values personally. This is going to help you guys, right? So some of my personal core values are my faith, my faith, my faith, my faith, um, time freedom, financial freedom, growth, and education. So those are some of my personal top core values as a person, as an individual. And then as a brand, my core values are transformation, you know, my business. So that means, and what I'm going to share with you as in my core values, that means that everything I align myself with, every action that I'm taking, they sift through my core values first. Does that make sense? You guys tap the screen if that makes sense to you. So everything that I do is in alignment with my core values. My core values lets me know if something is off. My core values lets me know if a partnership, you know, just don't, some don't seem right or whatever because they're not in alignment with the things that I value the most. And you remember there's two separate areas, right? So I walk my clients through a process of defining these because we can put some things on a list. We can just write some things down but what that looks like, because there are companies, some of you may even have core values that you've written down because somebody told you you needed to have them. But when you don't really fully walk through the process, you just write things down, but you don't live it. You're unable to live it, right? So for Renew Full Circle Consulting, our core values are transformation, growth, time freedom, giving value, education, and women having a healthy economy. So every action that I'm taking either has something to do with transformation, growth, time freedom, giving value, education, or women having a healthy economy. Those are my top five for my company. That means if I'm hiring someone, um, they're going to sift through those core values. So is this person in alignment with growth? or education? Do they value, you know, a healthy economy for women? Is it important to them that they're given value? Does this make sense to you guys? You guys tap the screen if this makes sense to you. So your core values are like at the center of everything that you do. And the process I walk my clients through inside of our academy helps them get really, really clear on that. That means when times come or there are times of uncertainty, they can sift whatever they're facing they can use their core values to sift it through. So for instance, if um, one of the big things that helps me personally with my core values is my faith, right? It, it's my faith. So that really helps me run a lot of stuff, you know, through, through that sifting space. Here are some things that faith as one of my personal core values helps me to do or, or things that it taught me. And these things roll over into my process of building and evolving as a brand. Um, I learned that perfecting is a process. So I don't always have this expectation for people to be perfect. I like for people to define what it is that they're good at and be on a journey of getting greater at it. Now, if I'm hiring someone, so in my brick and mortar business that I owned, I owned a brick and mortar for 10 years prior to consulting with women in business, um, I, I had expectations. There were things that they needed to know how to do. Uh, but if I saw that they had a growth mindset, I would sometimes hire someone who may not have had as much, much experience if they displayed that they are willing to grow. Does that make sense to you guys? 
So I'm able to sift through those things. I understand that perfecting is a process. This is what one of my core values, the core value of faith has done for me. Um, I, I learned that love is the greatest tool to sift through. So even when I'm making decisions about how I'm going to respond, what, what I'm going to offer um, a, as an owner, is it done from a space of love? You know, when I have to respond or comment or things of that nature, it all goes through my sifter of faith. The things that I learn in my faith that align with, you know, how I'm building my brand. Um, I learned to keep my eyes on the prize. I learned to keep my eyes on the prize. And what this would look like for you in building your brand is you have a destination that you're attempting to get to with your brand. So you're not all over the place. You're not grabbing for this or trying to do that because some of that is really rooted in fear. When we are trying 50 different things and just, you know, I believe that we should have numerous ideas. Um, I believe we should be willing to fail. But oftentimes when we're doing 50 different things, when we can't really define, you know, what we're good at or how we're going to show up in the world, it's because we're operating from a space of fear. It's like, well, let me do this, you know, let me do that. So um, I'm keeping my eye on the prize. You got to figure out what, what is it you're trying to do with your brand? Where are you trying to take this? What purpose is your brand going to have in the marketplace? You know, how are you going to serve? Um, my faith value has taught me to be authentically me. And what I mean by that is, um, I can be the same person by, when the camera goes off, you know, minus maybe a little makeup and stuff like that, that I could be on any set because my faith as a kingdom believer has allowed me to be authentically me. So I don't have to choose sides. I choose kingdom. That that has been huge for me, right? This, this is just me personally. Um, because I am not pushing my belief on you all. I'm just walking you all through the process of defining, getting clear on who you are as a brand. Listen, some people are making statements in this season. They're making moves in this season that are based on their emotions, based on their need to be included, um, based on their fear about losing business and things like that. They're making statements that they're having to get PR to come and like pretty up what it was that, they're set, that they said. So I, what I feel that needs to be done, because what this, what's transpiring, regardless of what race you are as an entrepreneur, is many people are finding themselves in a space where they need to do their work. They need to do their own work. They're being faced with things that they haven't been faced with before. There are challenges that they've never seen before. And what's showing up is whether or not they've done their work. Listen, the work, guys, is the main thing. Your personal growth, your personal development, it's a huge part you know, of building your brand. Um, my, my faith value has also taught me to take responsibility. It's taught me to take responsibility. Let me give you guys an example. So we have two sets of internet here at our home. Um, and my daughter uses one and I use the other. And every now and then, like in the morning, if I'm up before she's up, I log on to hers and mine. You know, I have several different, um, monitors or devices or whatever going and, when she gets up, she'll say, Ma, do you have anything connected on my internet? Now, I could easily, listen, guys, because this might seem like a small thing, right? But when we have, like, when we decide to take responsibility, it's not just in one area. It, like, rolls over into every area of your life. And there have been a few times where I just wanted to say, no, I'm not on your stuff, and click off of it. I know that sounds crazy. But in, and she would, it's not like she would ever know. I'm just showing you guys how taking responsibility really looks. Like it looks like when nobody's looking, when nobody would even know, right? For me, this is what I learned, you know, but I had to say, yeah, I'm on your, I'm on your, um, your Wi-Fi, you know, let me sign off. Little things, 
little things. And when we begin to develop and build those habits in the small things that nobody can see or nobody would even know anyway, it makes it easier when we got to get out in front of all of these people. And what what this climate is now that we build businesses in, it's completely different. There was no social media um, when I first started my business. I, w I was extremely busy. I built an amazing clientele without social media. Before Facebook Live, before Facebook, you know, before Instagram. And the climate that we're in now, we're bringing almost our whole self onto social media. And I think it's important that people understand that you can be authentic without having to tell all of your business on social media. You can be authentic without feeling pressured to do things exactly when people feel like you need to do it. Because the conversations that are being asked to be had in this particular season, some people don't know really what to say. Some people need to take time and, and really think through what they're going to share, what they're putting on social media before they put it on social media. But because they feel pressured or because they feel they may not be included, many people are making statements and making moves that they really don't mean. For instance, um, there are many multi-level marketers now who um, are you know feeling uncertain. There's a company that said something different from the way the climate would want them to say it, but it doesn't mean that what the person said is wrong. And there were many, you know, uh, multi-level marketers that were like being told, you know, you shouldn't support that company anymore. And it's just so much pressure. I, I said before, I feel people are being asked to have like their private therapy sessions on social media in this climate. And I want you to, I want to give you permission to um, take your time if you need to respond or if you need to voice how you feel about something, I think it's important that you take your time because it, it's kind of like this. So if you've been, imagine a woman, so I was in a dysfunctional um, marriage for, for many years and imagine I shared that story and I haven't done my work. Imagine what that would look like. A whole mess. It would look bitter. It would look angry, right? But I didn't do my work in on social media, right? I did my work behind the scenes and I shared it from a healed place. Does that make sense to you all? And so in this particular climate, one second. It's okay if you need to, <clears throat> you know, like just really take the time before you express how you feel or decide if that's something you're even going to do on social media. Because the stance that you're, you may take in any situation or any statement that you make, people are going to expect you to be able to hold that down. One second, guys. guys so what what i'm saying is whatever you're putting out can you authentically continue to operate like that six months from now is this going to be like this stance that you take for the entire time that you're building your brand this is why it's important that you identify who you are and what your values are and then if things don't align with the beliefs of that you have <clears throat> or the the brand that you have it may not be a wise thing for you to spew it out on social media immediately without thinking. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I don't know what's going on. One more second, guys.
You guys are being so patient with me. I appreciate it. So, if you want to build an authentic brand that you can stand by, that you can stand behind, I just want you guys to be mindful of how you function and flow, even on social media, and give yourself permission to gather your thoughts, um, to, to think about how you really feel, and talk about subjects that you know, <laughs> right? Um, because... It's very much a part of, of who you are as a brand. Your brand is how the marketplace sees you. And we begin to have expectations of people based on things that we saw them talk about. And people are watching, waiting for you to go off from what you said the other time, right? The second thing I want you to know is that none of us out here are perfect. None of us out here are perfect. And sometimes I feel that we have this righteous expectation for people to say things the exact same way we would say them, to do things the exact same way we would do them. Um, and it's, I, it's, it's coming from a very small space of thinking to me personally, this is my personal opinion, when we have this expectation for everyone to be the same. I was thinking about, <laughs> might be a little off or whatever, but I was thinking about when I used to hop on a plane, go shopping, spend a couple of G's and come back home the next day. Okay. Right. Um, I still enjoy, you know, shopping, but I'm not doing frivolous things like, cause I would do it back to back. And I was looking at, so I'm wearing, I, I have these boots that I wear when I go out in my garden now. How many of you have been watching me show my little tomato plants and all that good stuff? I'm having like an amazing time with my garden. I can't even explain it. Um, it has been a space of peace for me with everything that's going on in the world. It's like when I step out into nature and in my garden, put my hands in the dirt, you know, something else has been transpiring for me. So I've been wearing these boots out in the garden that I had bought a couple years ago as I I was just looking for a pair of boots. So they're like knee boots or whatever. And I don't know how many of you remember the brand Nine West. But at one time, Nine West wasn't like this, you know, Payless brand or, or anything of that nature. But the value of the shoes to me has changed tremendously. I told y'all I wear them in the garden. They get muddy, all of that. They actually stay on the back porch. And I was thinking this morning how when I used to shop, I would buy things. I have leather boots, leather coats. I mean, 15 years old, 20 years old. Um, the quality at that time was completely different from the quality that you get at um, stores now, you know, kind of like no matter what the brand is, they, they're making this uh, like pleather type thing that I cannot stand, right? So maybe you'll have to spend four or $500, you know, on a pair of boots instead of 150 if you really want to, to get leather. So anyway, back to my shopping. But one of the things I am grateful for that I used to do when I shopped I shopped value, right? I shopped value. Every now and then, I would buy something that was kind of trendy, but I realized that the trendy stuff didn't last. I'm going somewhere, guys, right? I realized that just because it was popular or, you know, it was trending or it was the thing that was going on, you know, the style in that season, it didn't last, but my items that I bought because of the value, they were like classic items, I still have them today. And oftentimes when we're on social media, and we're in the social media space, we're attempting to do all the trendy stuff because we haven't defined who we are as a brand. We haven't defined the core foundational things that are going to sustain us over long term. Right. So we do all the, you know, I've seen this person do this or I've seen this person do that. That stuff, it, it doesn't last. It's like you find yourself. It's like you're on this chase for the next new thing. 
And, you know, I'm really into building authentic brands. I'm into building really strong foundations and teaching my clients um, things that will sustain and continuously grow their brand regardless of the times. So it, even in this climate that I'm in, because I've done work, right, because I've done personal work, I didn't have to change who I am. I didn't have to change how I showed up. It rolled right over into everything that we're doing now because I understand what my brand is called to do in this season and how my brand is called to serve in this season. I knew that my space was for those entrepreneurs who weren't sure, should I market during this time? You know, I, I don't even know if, if I should do this particular thing that I'm doing anymore because people are saying this. My assignment was to help people who were feeling traumatized during the season. I've had a number of people reach out to me and say, listen, I need to sign up for a life strategy session. I don't know what to do in this climate. That's my space because I understand clearly what I'm assigned to do and who I am as a brand. And that doesn't change because something is trending. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't mean I don't have care and concern. It doesn't even mean that I haven't had a couple days back here where I wept because I have, right? But I understand who I am as a brand, what I'm designed to do, and who I'm called to. I've identified what my core values are, and yours are not necessarily going to be the same as mine. But when you define them and you really step into the space of true brand building, you, you can authentically be your brand regardless of what's going on. And you can do it from a sense of certainty. Does this make sense? You guys tap the screen if this makes sense to you all. So at the foundation of your brand is you. It trickles down into everything you do in your business. And this is why it's so important for you to do your work. It's so important for you to get clear about who you are and how you want to show up and how you want to serve in, in the marketplace. Listen, you'll go from chasing clients and money to attracting it. And I really mean that. Like I had a client on yesterday who messaged me on Facebook and asked me to check my PayPal, right? She just sent me money. Like she just sent me money. She didn't owe me anything, nothing of that nature. And she said she just wanted to bless me. She appreciated me. Listen, that's when you get in the space of attracting. It's because you define who you are as a brand and who you're called to serve and what you're going to offer um, in the marketplace. So to me, most people in this season are in reactive mode. Most people, a lot of brand builders or business owners are in reactive mode in this season. They aren't thinking through you know, what it is that they're doing. Many of us are speaking from our emotions, which aren't necessarily centered around our core values. You know, we're talking from an emotional space. And um, a lot of people are putting themselves in positions where they're going to have to do damage control later. Y'all tap the screen. A lot of people putting themselves in a position where they are going to have to do damage control later because they feel pressured. But they feel pressured because they haven't defined who they are. Remember, when we don't know who we are, we do anything and we do it with anybody. When we are uncertain about who we are, we'll do anything and we'll do it with anybody. Many of you are women who come on to watch me. Let's just think back some years in our dating season. I know I can think that. Because when I didn't know who I was, right, I still had standards but in comparison to who I am now and how clear I am about who I am, I mean, we did things with people that we wouldn't do things with now, right? Because we didn't know who we were. So remember, we do things when we don't know who we are, we do anything and we do it with anybody. But when you get clear, when you define things like your core values, you have brand clarity, things of that nature, it becomes a sifter, for everything that you do, for who you hire, how you build your team, the coaches even that you work with. I, I gave a, I did a post the other day talking about a coach that I worked with who didn't believe the same as I did. And that's not a um, prerequisite, 
prerequisite for me to learn from people um, because they may have a skill set that I want to learn. But when I see that what they believe is rolling over into what they're teaching, you know, it was just going a little left. And I thought she was absolutely amazing. But I understand that who you build, who you build with and who you connect with is going to roll over into your brand. But when you don't know who you are, none of that makes a difference. It, it doesn't matter as much, right? So I just wanted to share with you that, um, you know, really get clear. Spend the time to, my, my programs are a year long because it takes time to walk through the process of who we are, how we want to show up in the marketplace. What is our brand message going to be? What is our brand story going to be? Um, what, are, what are our core values? Um, I go through a portion called discovery. That's when we're figuring out like, well, who am I in this season, right? Many of us have never really sat down and had um, thorough um, tools to be able to define that. And so we built our whole life kind of like not knowing who we are and what we desire. And that shows up in your business. It shows up in your business building process. It shows up in the brand. It shows up in when people, what people actually see. Because sometimes what we want people to see about our brand is not what they actually see. Because we got this idea in our head, but we don't really see how it's really um, transpiring as, as far as you know what people are really um, seeing in us as a brand and your brand is you know how the marketplace sees you and you can be intentional about how you show up as a brand when you're clear you know about where you want to go and who your brand is so i just wanted to talk about this awakening kind of what i'm seeing on social media give you guys some practical things that you can think about in your brand building process and to let you know that it's just not your website logos and pretty pics. Those are extensions after you figure out who you are and how you want to show up and what you really value, what's important to you, what are your beliefs. I have a chart that um, I give my clients and after we've gone through the process of defining what their core values are, they put it on the chart and they laminate it because that is the thing that they're going to use for hiring, for you know networking opportunities, classes and courses that they take, they're going to be like, okay, this doesn't really even align with who I am as a brand or where I want my brand to grow. Why am I wasting energy, time, money, resources, revenue on this particular thing when it's not in alignment? But you can't do that when you don't have um, clarity. How are you guys feeling in as entrepreneurs in the times that we're seeing in the space? Um, Listen, I believe that many of us have causes that we speak about strongly. And I think that's absolutely amazing when you do understand, you know, what your brand is designed to do and you're able to really speak from an authentic space on that. I speak up for, you know, women's personal economy. I'm going to be teaching that all the time because of what I know the opposite of having a healthy economy does to your life, your stress, your family, marriages, things of that nature. I know the impact of having a healthy economy uh, for women. I know what it does. It, it transforms people's lives to be able to walk in the space of, you know, learning how to create revenue, um, spend their revenue and invest it. it it's huge. Um, so that's something that I am going to speak heavily about. Mindset is also something else that I'm going to speak about heavily because I believe that irregardless of where we are, if we change our mind, we can change our life. If we change our mind, we can change the circumstance. If we change how we think about it, the results change. Everything changes in our life when we change our mind. And some of that is going through a process of unlearning. You know, there are a lot of people in this season who are having to unlearn some things that they have been doing all of their life um, because that was their normalcy, right? They're having to unlearn those practices. Now, I don't care what race you are. There's some things that you're going to have to unlearn for your next level. Things that you thought were um, the end-all, be-all because it was your normalcy. So that's my take on today, the awakening that's occurring in 
our um, our world space. I absolutely love it. From from my perspective, I love it um, because I know what happens when we step into new spaces of awareness. I know what happens when you know things are brought to surface and we're made aware of things. It gives us a platform and a place to to really grow. And as a growth strategist, it's important. Awareness is the first thing. Many of you may have may be learning things that you never knew before. Even as an African American, as a black person, um, we're learning things. You know, we're learning things about our culture in this particular season. Um, diversity has never really been an issue for me. Um, when I owned a brick and mortar service based business, I I was thinking about all the different nationalities and people that work with me. So I had. Uh, an esthetician from Russia who worked with me for years. I had a young lady from Greece who worked with me. I had an Italian lady to work with me. I had men. I had, you know, blacks, African-Americans, um, Caucasians. So diversity has never really been an issue for me. But I think that's because, you know, in, even in high school and things of that nature, I was in class with, so, with other, you know, races. It, it, it wasn't like when I opened my business, I had this idea of what the people I hired looked like. My idea was I had values, right, that I wanted people to align with. I had skill sets that I wanted people to align with. Customer service was huge for me. So I hired people who were qualified to fulfill the positions, right? So diversity wasn't, you know, necessarily... Um, an, an issue for me. It's always been a part of my brand. And I remember specifically a conversation that I had with God where he talked to me about, um, my business was called Abstract, that it, he would always talk to me about many colors, many colors. Now, you got to get your own revelation from God, right? So because I understand that, because I understand that's a part of who God designed me to be um, in my business building process, then the way I finagle in today's climate may be different from the way someone else finagles. But it doesn't mean I don't care. It doesn't mean I'm not concerned. It doesn't mean I'm not involved or doing my part in some form or fashion. It's just that I understand who I am as a brand. You guys tap the screen. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that make sense to you all? So your core values, who you are as a brand is so important. Understanding it, understanding how to define it. Many of you have been watching me for years and have been wanting to work with me. Um, I do have my programs, again, are year-long programs. But here lately, I've been offering a five-day opportunity to work with me. So maybe you have questions about the year-long opportunity. What's it like? Um, what am I going to experience? Things of that nature. I believe that the Prep My Brand um, experience that starts on Wednesday is a great space for you to be able to see if you are in alignment for us to work together um, for a long, you know, frame of time. You know, people, uh, when they think of a year long, they're like, can I handle that? <laughs> you know, am I going to be able to do an entire year? What is that experience like? If that is you and you've been sitting on a fence and you've been watching me for quite some time, I invite you to join us for the Prep My Brand experience. It starts on Wednesday. Um, the investment does increase on Wednesday. So I do allow people to still join on Wednesday, but the investment is more on that particular day. But that'll give you an opportunity to um, see how it is to work with me. You're going to you know, find some um, strategies to make some more money in those five days as well. But if you're considering that long-term um, frame of working together and really getting clear on your brand, that would be a great opportunity. And for those of you who've been following me for a long time and you know this is what you need in this season and you're ready, um, go sign up for the Academy. It will be life-changing for you in so many ways, full circle. Um, of course, you're going to profit more. You're going to be positioned in the marketplace differently. Um, you're going to get clarity that you need and coin. <laughs> clarity and coin. So two ways that you guys can work with me, those who have been following for quite some time and you're like, you know, I'm ready. I know that um, what she teaches and what she shares is what I really need in this season. Um, join me inside 3D Success Academy. That link is renewfullcircle.com 
slash 3DA if someone is in a position and they can put it in the comments for me, that would be great. And for those of you who kind of want to test the waters, you can join us for the Prep My Brand Challenge. It starts on Wednesday. If you sign up today or tomorrow, you get it at the price that is listed for now. If you sign up on Wednesday, the day that we start, the price increases. And all of these links, actually, if you go to my profile here on this particular page, I have the links that you can directly click to underneath my, my name, you know, when it tells where I work and things like that. There are two links you can click those on to make a decision to enroll in either one of those. But for those of you who want to go to it now, the prep my brand link is bit.ly slash my prep one, the number one bit.ly slash my prep one the academy renewfulcircle.com slash 3da the academy renewfulcircle.com slash 3da guys we got to build authentic brands because they got to live with us they got to grow and evolve with us and i wanted you guys to understand that authentic doesn't mean that you have to tell everything to social media. It doesn't mean, authenticity doesn't mean, you know, that would be like expecting people. Remember I said, this is what it feels like I'm watching to me. I feel like I'm watching a climate that is expecting people to have a therapy session on social media. They're expecting people to have a session that they would have with their therapist or their coach on social media. Right, And most of the work that we do, we do it behind the scenes and then we are able to show up authentically. But if you're feeling like you just got to spill all the beans, spill all the imperfection of your process um, in order to be considered authentic, that's not what authentic means. <laughs> it, it's not. And so if you're feeling pressured that people aren't going to think that you're being real, um, that's just not what authenticity means. It doesn't mean people have to know every single thing that you're doing. That's not what being authentic means. Being authentic is when you define who you are, what your core values are, who you are as a brand, and you're being true to that. Does that make sense? Somebody tap the screen. That's being authentic. You're being authentic to who you say you are, but that's two different things from feeling like you just got to spill everything on social media. Many of us are doing work. I believe our work should be done. Um, some of it we do uh, because of the climate and the way brands are built now. Some of it we do on social media, right? But a lot of it we, we do behind the scenes. Much of what you're seeing from me now is from work I've been doing personally on myself work that I was called to do because I was in such a dysfunctional marriage and I was um, finding my way with God and all of this was going on at the same time. I was feeling like I needed to be, um, you know, I, I needed to honor the things of God at the same time. I, I knew my situation was off, you know, so I did a lot of work. I'm still doing work because as we grow and we evolve, there's another space um, for us to work on or to work in as it relates to who we are and who we are as a brand. But when you start doing that personal work and that personal growth, it changes everything. It changes everything about how you authentically, you know, are able to show up um, in alignment with how you want to, hey Rose, hey Rosita, hey everybody. Um, how you want to be experienced um, as a brand. That's my take this evening, guys. Okay, listen, we're going through a big awakening here um, in, our, in our world. And I wanted to provide some things that will allow you guys to be authentic. And to let you know that authentic doesn't mean that you got to come on and have your whole therapy session. <laughs> you know, on your social media platform. That's not what authenticity is at all. But being able to be authentic comes from you defining what your core values are um, as far as a person and as a brand and then authentically being able to position yourself to present that 
to the marketplace. That's what authentic are. Are you authentic to your brand? Remember I shared with you guys before that if we don't know who we are, we go anywhere and we go with anybody. And it, it's the same thing with your brand. When you're uncertain about who you are as a brand, you do anything and you do it with anybody, right? But when you get clear, when you understand what your core values are, Nadia, hey, beautiful, how are you? When you understand what your core values are, um, you can authentically align everything that you do with that. Everything that you do with that. I'd love to support you in the process two ways you can work with me. Those of you who've watched me for a long time and you know that this is an alignment with where you're at in this season and what you need in your life and your business, join us inside the academy. It is a year-long opportunity. The work that you do, the money that you make, <laughs> the clarity that you get, priceless, priceless um, investment, priceless investment. Those of you, you know, you like, I kind of want to experience it first. Join us for our Prep My Brand experience. It starts Wednesday. Price goes up on Wednesday. I will enroll people on that day. But today and tomorrow, the price is the same. Um, bit.ly slash myprep1. bit.ly slash myprep1 for those joining the challenge and those joining the academy, renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. Renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. We're having an awakening, right? But we're going to build authentic brands. Peace. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. Listen, it's not too late. Hit the share button. Let someone else get the message.